I have to really update that picture. <laughs> that picture of New York is Midtown and I do not live in Midtown anymore. I have to get a nice Central Park picture. Wonderful. Where well, we're going to get started here. People come in late. They could come in late. So today we're going to talk about trading. We're going to talk about gaps, which is a strategy that I trade. And I'm going to go over every trade we did in the last week. A little bit longer than a week since last Monday. We've had all winners. We're on a roll here. So again, the purpose of today is to show you that you can, in fact, make money trading and you can in fact earn a living trading or do it on the side or whatever the reason is you want to do it. My main objective today is to talk to you a little bit about what I do. And if you think this is something that you're interested in, then you can contact me by email or phone after the webinar today and ask me questions. Or like I said, call me on the phone. People call me on the phone, talk to me on the phone. I'm perfectly willing to speak to people. I'm a real person. I live in New York, like I said, and I'm doing an actually, I'm doing a live class in New York. It's the first class I've ever done that's a live class. People are already signed up and it's in less than three weeks. So I never did a live event before. Didn't really know what I was getting into when I decided to plan this, um, but it is a very special event and, and actually it's gonna be in an absolutely gorgeous place in New York City and so I'm pretty excited and that is when my next class is and again it's a three-day class which is all day Friday all day Saturday and a half day Sunday to allow people to you know fly home if they have to fly home Sunday for work on Monday uh, and we'll talk about that in a little bit but I do regularly classes online usually once a month I did not do any online classes this month in August and now here it is August is almost over and I'm not doing online classes September because we're doing the live class. My next online class is not till the end of October. So if this is something you want to do and start trading with me, this is the class to do it because earning season starts the next earning season in a couple of weeks. And I really think this is going to be an optimal, optimal time to trade in the next 60 plus days. And why am I saying that? Because it we're coming into an election. So as crazy as it is, we actually have an election in a little over 60 some days, like less than 90 days. I don't know what the count is, 70 some days, whatever. It's gonna be here before you know it. And I think there's gonna be a lot of volatility in the market. And of course, if you know how to trade volatility, you can make money. If you don't, it can be very stressful for you. So we're gonna talk about what I do today, which is based on gaps, like I said, but really, a lot of times I am playing the volatility that comes into a stock. And, it, and a gap itself is something that happens in stocks, and it also happens in the market. I don't trade the market every day, though. Some days I do, some days I don't. Uh, but I do look to find a trade every single solitary day. So I appear on TV as well. I think many of you have seen me on TV. Um, and again, if you have questions, you can always reach out to me, call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And again, I try to make myself available to people or get back to them within 24 hours of the same day if people email me or call me. So the class, again, here are the dates for the class, September 20th, 21st, and 22nd. The price of the class in the live class is more than I charge for online. Obviously, I'm renting the space, and it's three days. It's $12,999. I do have spots available for this class, but the deadline is the 12th, which is the week before, because I have to tell the meeting space room. So before we get started and we talk about what I was mentioning before about the last week's trades and particularly gaps, I wanted to put the stats in here so far year to date. So year to date, for the trading room, we are up, let me move this here, 618,206. This doesn't include one trade uh, or one day, which is today. So it's actually more than that because we had uh, positive trades today, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over, I have the trades in here. But this is a great, you know, basically start to what will be fall learning season and it starts in about two weeks. 
And again, the basis of what I do is based on gaps. So many of these stocks are shorts. Many of these trades are shorts. So again, while I do, will go long, occasionally we go long, Cisco was a long we did, I do prefer to short, and I'm going to explain about that too. And then here's the results here to date for our options newsletter. This is a separate newsletter. You don't have to do my class to sign up and trade options with me, okay? But you do have to, to, to be in the room. So I think it's important for people to learn the system and understand it. I think people will make more money if they understand what they're doing rather than trading and taking trades blindly on the newsletter. But again, not everybody wants to take the class and that's totally up to you. But year to date results were over 3 million for the year for options and day trades together. And again, the day trades are trades on margin. Just to be clear, you have to have a margin account to do the day trades. Like for example, today we shorted Amazon. Again, I'm gonna go over that you would have needed a margin account to do it. Now, there are people in the live trading room that are taking my day trades as an options trade. That's not what I do. In the room, I'm calling the trade as a day trade where I'm saying 50 by 80 and you're shorting it. I'm giving the entry, telling you the stop and then saying where I'm getting out. With options, I trade options like I'm gonna let the trade play out for a couple of days or maybe one day if it has a big move or maybe two days. Okay, we'll talk about that more in a little bit. But anyways, how can you earn a living trading? Number one, you need a winning strategy. Without that, you're not gonna be able to make money. In other words, you have to have a strategy that you use every single solitary day that has more winners and losers. And if you don't have a strategy at all or anything that you follow on a consistent basis, then you, you, you have no possibility of actually being positive or winning. Again, you have to be consistent. And number two, I believe that you need a supportive mentor. For the people that come to me, the purpose of that is me. I am here to answer questions for people or call me on the phone or basically the live trading room every day is a place where people can ask me questions. And then obviously I'm calling the trades. So the support of the live room is you can take the trades with me. So that is actually very helpful because a lot of times people take classes and they don't have the support of an actual human being or a person to go to and ask questions after the class or again, be in the room every day. You know, like I said, we've had every single trade has been a winner in the last week and a half. We're going to go over them, but the bottom line is having someone to call the trades also helps support you. Once you learn what to do, you should be looking at the same things as me. But when you start out and when you're beginning, you know, that helps. And so many people are like, well, how, do, how long is it going to take me to make it back, make it back the cost of the class? It depends how much money you're risking. That is something that has to do with the size of your cash account. Again, we'll talk about that more later. But the purpose of learning in, from me, and as particularly in the live class in New York, is that you will understand what I do so that you can look at a chart the way that I do, which is how I'm able to call so many winning trades where I can see that something's going to drop. Like, for example, we shorted Amazon today. How did I know that trade would drop? How did I know that it would fall because we shorted it? Again, that's the purpose of learning and understanding. It's like a window into my mind or seeing what I'm seeing so that you can see it too, so that you, you don't need me really for the rest of your life. But I do think it's helpful to have a support and a mentor, particularly at the beginning. And for some people... Some people need a mentor for forever. Some people need a mentor for a couple of years. Some people need a mentor for a few months. You know, again, everybody is on a different spot with their learning. But anyways, my point though, is that one of the most important things you need is consistency. So you'll see that going over the last few days of trades. Every day I get up and I'm looking for the same thing. I'm looking for the same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing. Same thing. Once you train yourself to look for that same thing and then trade only that, you will have consistent results and then you're going to be able to see the money. Because again, whether you're training for a living part-time or full-time, the whole purpose is you still have to have more winners and losers. And I'm very consistent with my strategy. And so my results show the consistency. Again, it doesn't mean that every trade works. I have some trades that lose. But the fact is I have more winners and losers because I'm very consistent with applying my method, applying my strategy, applying my system. Does that make sense? And I see some people coming in here late. For those of you that are popping in late, if you want to type something or ask a question, you go down to where it says to individual user, and then you will type in the chat box and I will see it as we go along.
But anyways, getting back to my point, a high win ratio counts, results count. It's very difficult for people to keep going and refunding their trading account and losing and refunding it and losing and refunding it. It takes a toll on people. I know when I started trading, I didn't know what I was doing and I was doing that at the beginning too. And when I started trading, actually, I started trading with real money. I think when I, if, I, if I look back and say what would I have done differently, I think if I had traded on a demo or practice initially, I would have saved myself um, losses at the beginning. So I don't have a problem with people starting out and trading on a demo, but you should get off a demo after a few weeks. You know, Maximum, I would say 90 days. Some people are, trade on demos, I think, for too long. You never really get the real feel of it. I never traded on a demo. And, I, and again, looking back, I when I was developing the system, the system that I trade now and I'll obviously teach, I wish that I had started out slower and smaller with my risk and I didn't. But, you know, I look back and I say, well, maybe I would have never figured out what I know if I had started out that way because the, the, the crux of it with real money, when you make it and you feel that exhilaration and that positivity, same thing when you lose it and you feel the negativity where you want to, it pushes you to do better. So when I take a loss in something that it usually pushes me to do better the next day or figure it out or if I read the marketing correctly, for example. You know, uh, a lot of times people get down when they lose. You can always take away something from a losing trade that you can learn from it. And again, you take that information into the future and you don't repeat the same mistake. And that's how you can move forward because again, the whole purpose of trading is to make money. It's not just to press the buttons, okay? Any questions here before we keep going? Again, any questions, you just type it in the chat box. So today I want you to open your mind to learn something. We're gonna talk about gaps. We're gonna go specifically over some trades, like I said, but it's really about changing what you're doing. If you've been trading for a long time or even a couple weeks or a couple months or let alone a couple years and you're not seeing the results you want, maybe you're not losing, maybe you're up, but you're not up as much money as you wanna be. If you wanna be more successful, you have to change what you're doing. And the sooner the better. You know, we're getting into, it's gonna be fall here in New York City. By the time the class is at the end of September, it will be fall. Actually, it's the first weekend of fall. The September 20th is the first day of fall. It's a good time to change. You know, we still have plenty of time left in 2024 for you to turn your trading year around if you're not having a good year or really bang it out and have a strong close to this year. And again, one of the cornerstones to everlasting trading success is consistency. I can't, I can't stress that enough. And having talked to so many people over the number of years that I've been teaching people since I started my business, which was in 2012, so many people jump around. They jump from Bitcoin to futures to options to, to swing trades. They're just all over the place. And they're never consistent with any type of trading or strategy. Again, when I started tra trading, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I got into shorts and then I got into gaps and then I never looked back. So I've been very consistent since I started. Of course, I didn't know what I know now when I first started 16 years ago. But the fact is, it's really helped me to develop myself as a trader and then my program to get really good at one thing. So without consistency, it's really hard to stay in the market for any length of time. And in order to be consistent, a person needs proper focus on what counts. And you got to learn that too. So if you've been dreaming of being successful in the market for years, but the success has eluded you, stop and consider why. A lot of times people want to play the blame game and they want to blame themselves and say that they're not... You know, they're not disciplined or something like that. A lot of times it really isn't you. It's the system or strategy that you're trading that doesn't work. And it's got to work under any market conditions too. So it's time to elevate yourself in your trading to a new level. This requires a deeper understanding, better comprehension, and an overall wider perspective of what makes individual success possible for a trader or investor in the stock market. Again, we were talking about the fact that we're getting into an election cycle, which could mean volatility in the market, you got to understand you got to understand the conditions of the overall market right now and what's happening making a living trading is not impossible however it can be challenging for many people to make this kind of money trading or any kind of money trading because they lack a good system okay and again the system allows you to have the consistency so the point i'm trying to get across is if you've been thinking about trading or thinking about changing a strategy and you are trading if you're going to do it do it now you know 
The point is that you don't want to get into a rut where it's really hard for you to change. And unfortunately, I think a lot of traders do that. They're like, I've been buying every dip and it's been working until it didn't the last two weeks. And then I lost and now I'm having trouble again. Again, it has to work more than it doesn't. That's what consistency means. So again, becoming a successful trader investor requires becoming a specialist and defining where the institutions are buying and selling a stock. So what do I do? Every day I'm getting up and I'm focusing on shorts. I'm focusing on what? Bearish gaps. I'm looking for gaps that are being created by institutional money. That's what I do. I'm looking at a day chart and we're going to look at charts here in a minute. Learning advanced technical analysis is required. What does that mean? It means reading price action and charts. You can look at the data and you can look at the economic data and you can listen to the Fed and you can do all of that. But if it doesn't support what the price action tells you, it's pointless. A lot of times, and you saw this even last week where they updated a number, a lot of times the numbers are revised. The data that comes out, it's not even accurate. How can you even make decisions based on that? It's kind of crazy, actually, the environment that we're in. So you can't even say, well, if the data is good, we're going to rally. Or if the data is good, we're going to fall. You can't even say that. Not that I would ever have thought to trade like that. But it's the price action that you have to look at. And then whatever it does, it does. The reasons behind it, if you want to read into or think about, that's fine. But that's an overlay of top of what you should be looking at, which is basically the chart. So comprehending how to redefine and trade with this power will, will have a huge positive impact on your profitability as a trader. So elevate yourself, your trading, and your profits to a higher level of consistency and success by learning how to read the footprints of institutions trading in the market. And I want to say one other thing, too. Once you start to make money every day, which, like I said, we've had no losers in the last week and a half. Once you start to make money every day, you expect yourself to do just that. Consequently, if you've been losing or you're in a rut, you start and you're losing consistently, you expect that too. And you see what I'm saying? So your brain will play tricks on you. Obviously, you go into the market, you don't want to lose. But if you're on a losing streak, you start to expect that you will lose. And then you start to trade in fear and you start to make worse decisions. And again, that's not where, not where you want to be. But the same thing happens to the plus size where I expect myself to get up and make money tomorrow. My expectation is that I will make money tomorrow and the day after that, and the day after that. Again, some days I take trades that lose, but I don't expect myself to lose. I expect myself to win. And that type of mentality is extremely important for you to have. And if you're losing and you've been losing for days or weeks or years, however long it is, that really gets into your psyche and you have to turn it around. And really, it doesn't take that long to turn it around, is my, is my point. But until you do, know that your psyche is playing tricks on you and going against you, even if you want to make money. That's the reason you take the trade you want to. Your psyche could be telling you that you think you're going to lose today because you lost the last 10 days or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's understand. That's another long discussion for another time, how the brain works and how your mind works. But anyways, it's about reading the footprints of institutional money in the market. So I'm trying to find stocks that are that are what? That are going to drop, that are going to have institutions that dump their positions, sell it, or short. Because again, hedge funds can short. Banks take positions in, in, in stocks. They short or they sell. They do both. Uh, now, we were talking about options. Okay, with... The reason that I'm up more money for the year at options is I risk more on my options. Now, why do I do that? Well, in the past, some stocks have been very expensive <laughs> to trade as options. So I've always risked more trading options than I have for day trades. You can risk the same. You can do one contract. Okay, so I have an advanced trader risk and a beginner trader risk here to show this is a BA trade that actually you could still be in this trade. I got out of this trade, but this trade doesn't expire till Friday, but I did get out of it. So last Tuesday, 820, I called the 175 BA puts. Um, I'm just going to show you this here right now when I called it. So I called the 175s here. I got out of this trade. Okay, it was a nice move. It had a big move. It was a beautiful move. It dropped. If you're still in this trade today, I don't know where BA closed today. Actually, you're still positive. And the trade could continue. Today is only Tuesday. It could drop past the point that it was last Tuesday. I don't know. I wanted to get in and get out. But I called the trade here and I called it why? Because it had a bearish gap that rated per my system. So what's a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So the day before up here, BA, again, this is was a news gap. 
The stock close here runs 179 and change. Gap down in the morning, boom. Again, this was Monday to Tuesday. It gapped around 176 and change, open, dropped. So again, it went through the strike. It had a big move. It came down here to 170 and I did the trade and got out. So we did puts. So again, what is a put? A put is an option. It's basically like shorting the stock. You do not need a margin account to buy a put and sell it to exit it. So that's what I'm doing. So I bought the put and then I sold it. So I'm trading what? Momentum. So again, go back. What happened here? It, it got dumped. It fell. Okay, so again, whatever the reason, you could say news, this thing, that thing, whatever. Institutional money dumped it. So the cost of the option was $3.25, which I thought was pretty reasonable. Again, my risk is more for my options. I sold it at six. Again, good, solid trade. My return on investment was 85%. Again, this could continue lower this week. I don't know. If you took four contracts and was 1,300, you could have made 1,100. Again, I wanted to get in and out quickly and book the money, and I did. So that was an that ops and options trade. And again, I sent this trade, and just go over here at 9.20 in the morning before the open. So again, if you join the newsletter, you're gonna get trades. You might get a trade at 7 a.m. You can't take the trade until the market opens, but I'm watching it for that particular day to get an entry in it. We also did last week snow, okay? Again, you still could be in this too. I didn't look at where this close today. We did the 120 puts in snow. I got out of this as well. We did it Thursday, and again, I sent it right into the open. 350 was the cost of this. It was 100% train. I got in, got out, got out of it the second day. You could have got out of it the Thursday. And again, if you risk $1,400, you could have made $1,400. So the snow was here. This was a nice trade. Again, what did it do? It gapped. How did I know the snow would fall? Well, I didn't get in the snow here. I didn't know snow would fall here. I weighed it. Snow had earnings. Snow could have gapped up. Could have gapped up. Could have been up 150. So I am not capturing this move here just so you know from 135 to 120, whatever. That's impossible to do because I don't know that snow is going to gap at all. Do you follow what I'm saying? I'll see the gap at night. Could be after hours. Or I could see it in the morning. How many trades do you complete on an average a day? For day trades, usually one, maybe two. That's it, okay? For options, I might not do any options one day. I might have no options for two or three days in a row. And then I might do three or four on one day. So it all kind of averages out. So options are not every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. Because again, it's just, it doesn't work that way. Because there are some trades actually that I don't do options in that we do day trades in, if that makes any sense. Or they're too thin or they're too cheap or they don't have a volume or they don't even have an option contract in it but then there's other things like maybe i don't want to do the market as a day trade or something but i see a market directional trade like in the qqqs of the spy and then i want to do a trade in the market and then i might do a qqq and a spy which is essentially the same trade but that would be two trades if i did two options uh do you get pricing in options no I don't because if I call trade again at 9.20 in the morning, I have no idea what this price is going to be till the open. That's one reason. Secondly, if I'm calling it at whatever time I'm calling it, you should take it and pay close to what I'm paying if you do it initially. I'm not waiting for a pullback. And again, I'm trying to trade as well. Today, today's a good example. When we get to today's trades, today I screwed up a trade that I could have made money and Sabina was there. I shorted the cues, I was up, and I didn't get out of it right because I was trying to get options trades out. I am only one person, and I am literally trading and calling trades at the same time. It is a lot to do. It would be impossible for me to wait until the open, run the room, call the trade, and then send a second email out and say, take it at five. That's like, that's just ridiculous. If I send the trade at any time between, you know, before the open, I should say. Could be 6 a.m. to 9.29. You take the trade in the first five minutes of the day. If I call a trade at 11 a.m., do the trade when you get it. Now, what if I call a trade at 11 a.m. and you're in a meeting, you're at work, you're doing something, you went to lunch, whatever, you're at the doctor's, you come back, it's two o'clock, look at the chart. If I call a snow put at 11 a.m., and I'm just making this up here, I don't, 
call that many trades during the day. But say I call a day trade, uh, a, an option during the live day between 9.30 and 4. I don't call that many. Most are in the pre-market or right at the open. If I call something at 11 and you're in a meeting, you get back at 2, and I called the 120 snow puts and snow is at 115, you wouldn't do that trade. It's gone. You missed it. Forget it. It's done. If I call the snow 120 puts at 11 and you get back at 2 and snow is still hovering, then you could do the snow. That's fine. You didn't miss it. Um, are the options the same stocks as what you're watching for the day trading? No, not always. That's what I was just saying. No, sometimes, but not always. And if you are in the room and you're on the options newsletter and you're doing both, and I call both in the same thing, which we did with Snow, then I really, 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 really like it and I do it and I do it. So in other words, if I happen to call this same thing, I'm in love with that. So do it, do them both is what I'm saying. Um, getting back to what I was saying. I'm, again, I'm seeing people come in late. You have to chat in the room if you have a question. So we did the 120 snows and it worked it again. I don't know where snow is at today. I think snow is still through the strike. I think you could still be in it, but why? Again, don't get confused. Options are not swing trades. So if I call a trade on a Thursday that doesn't expire for, you know, 10 days to the following Friday, that doesn't mean you're holding it to Friday. That doesn't mean it's going to keep dropping forever and ever and ever. The point of it is to take it, get the move and book it. Take it, get the move and book it. You want to make money in trades. You want to get out. So this is just a different way to play the momentum. And we got we got more momentum. Again, I'm going to go over the stage trade in a little bit. But I definitely got a, a, lar a lower exit in the short on the snow than I did in the day trade of the snow of the option. Again, I still made really good money in the day trade in the snow. But again, I get out of my day trades very, very quickly. Okay, so the whole purpose, whether you do it as a day trade or an option, though, is to look for institutional money to see where it's going, to see what it's doing, because you get commitment, commitment from institutional money that's going to help you get the momentum. Right now, and I'm just talking about the last couple of days, like, you know, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, just these last couple of days, it's been hard for traders to get commitment from the from the market direction in one way or another. Yes, the market's strong. Yes, the market's in an uptrend. Yes, I get it. But again, it, it's not really going anywhere. We haven't gone over the highs yet. A lot of people think we will. We haven't yet though. So until we do, we haven't. NVIDIA reports Wednesday night. So again, we're going into holiday week. Labor Day is a couple of days away actually. Market's closed for Monday, Labor Day. And we have a big earnings that's out Wednesday night. Will NVIDIA gap 100%? I guarantee it will. Is it going to gap up or gap down? I don't know. I'm not in any trades in NVIDIA, but it's going to have a gap. Will it be a good enough gap to play long or short? Again, I don't know. I have no idea until I see the gap. I will see it Wednesday night. So I'll have plenty of time to prep and get ready and figure out what I want to do because I'm not trading till Thursday in NVIDIA because I don't trade after hours because you cannot do options after hours and I don't take I don't trade the post and pre-market. I do day trades between 9.30 and 4. So again, we have an interesting week. Why? Whatever NVIDIA does, and we can look at that when we're done with the lecture here, the market's gonna do. So we have a really big one, a really big one this week that will 100% affect the market. And I'm not saying that nothing will happen this week at all that will affect the market besides NVIDIA, but that will affect the market. I think it's the biggest uh, thing that could affect the market this week, barring something to happen with the war overseas that could happen. The Fed isn't supposed to say anything this week. And, and again, so if NVIDIA sells off like a hot cake, then the market could too. And we also have another big earnings actually this week, Wednesday night, which is crowd. And again, the sector of the crowd in that specific sector could affect the market too, but, but more so NVIDIA. Um, how long might it take someone to go from beginner to advanced, advanced trader methods, number of contracts, 30 to 40 days to execute and learn? Well, you're going to learn the class in the time that you're doing the class. You're going to learn it. Okay. As far as 30 to 45 days, I mean, obviously, I don't know how much money you're starting with. So, again, we had this discussion a couple of days ago or, or two weeks ago, whatever, in the live room. We were talking about different types of trading accounts. If you have an options account set up at a broker or it's a retirement account and you're allowed to trade options, people do that too. Um, you have to look at how much money you have in total and you have to space yourself out. 
Say you have $10,000 in an options account. You shouldn't risk all $10,000 at any one point in time. The most you should ever have at risk in your account is 50% if you're, if, you're doing, if you're doing an options, okay, for example, where an option is you take the trade, the money's you know, being sucked up in the trade until you get out of it, whether you get out of it the same day or that, that couple days later. It depends how much you are risking. So if you have a day trade account, you have to have a margin account. At a retail broker, you need 25,000. You get four to one margin. At a prop place, you can open up an account with 2,500 or 5,000 and get 10 to one margin. Again, you're in and out of day trades in five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes with me. Again, that is not, that is on margin. So if you, it depends how much you're risking too. So for example, if you have a $5,000 prop account, you your buying power at, at a day trade firm would be 10 to 1 so it'd be 50,000 you're not risking 50,000 in a trade even if you're sucking up all of your buying power 50,000 you might have 300 shares and you might be risking 250 dollars cash if the trade stops you'd lose 250 of the 5,000 cash and you would not risk 50 percent of the cash in a day trade account you would you would like i'm just making up numbers here because i'm what you can ask me what i think you could do what you want but this is what i think okay so if you have a five thousand dollar prop account you should be risking no more than probably three hundred dollars in per trade 500 would be a lot that'd be 10 percent. you follow me and you're only going to be in one day trade at a time most two with me you follow me but you might be in a couple options so that's why i'm saying you could you could risk 50 percent if you don't want to risk 50%, you don't have to. But it depends how much per trade you're risking. So if you, if you have enough money to risk $1,000 on a day trade, I'm just going to use day trades, for example, okay, you're trying to flip it over once a day. So again, do you have the money to do that? I don't know, Dan. But theoretically, again, let's say 70% win ratio figure every 10 trains, seven are winners and three are losers. Again, we're gonna go over the last week's trades. Everyone's been a winner the last week, but that's not the case all the time. Figure seven winners and three losers, how long it's gonna take you to get in 30 days to the point, but you have to be able to risk $1,000 $1, a day. So that need, means you'd need in a, in a day trade account, I'd say more than 5,000 I'd say at least 7,500, 8,000 in a prop account. With a 25,000 retail account, you could risk 1,000. So we're gonna go over my risk, which is an advanced trader risk here. You could divide it by half, you could divide it by a quarter and come up with the amounts. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll have my assistant do that in an email to show you. Because I didn't show beginner amounts here for day trades. I only showed beginner amounts for for options. I don't know if that answers your question, but it comes down to how much you have to risk. So that's, you know, that's the same question I get when people say, well, how much is it going to take it to make me back the cost of a class? It depends how much you're risking. It's like, again, this is something that's all relative with the amount of cash that you have. The reason people go prop, though, and again, I don't want to get too off target here or too off point, but the reason people go prop for day trades is because they want more margin. They want more margin and they want to be able to take bigger position size, but you still have to have the cash there to cover it no matter what anyways. Okay. 25000 is fine. That's, that's good. I think you could risk $1,000 in a trade. If you're new and you're just, it's your first week or two, if you want to risk 500, just, you know, just start out slower, that's okay too. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying about commitment, and I want to refer this to the NVIDIA, something big is going to happen with NVIDIA. It's something big is going to happen Wednesday night. We don't know that. But I guarantee you there are people that are doing research and have paid for research reports and they're looking at NVIDIA and they're trying to figure it out. Same thing with Crowd. Like I said, Crowd is out Wednesday night. And Crowd had some really negative publicity when it had that Microsoft outage that was like a month ago or whatever. So again, we don't do those things. We don't know. But I guarantee you, big investors, institutions, hedge funds, they pay for research reports. They're doing research as we speak about these earnings Wednesday night. Everyone's talking about it on TV. They were talking about NVIDIA today at CNBC. It's two days away. 
we we don't we can't get involved with that but we do have live data when you pay for a platform you pay you open a broker's account and you deposit money you should get live feed and your feed should be exactly the same feed as mine within milliseconds depending on your internet connection i mean you can't get much faster than where we have now what we trade years and years and years ago people would have to read the tape or they would have to call in orders and i mean prices could fluctuate astronomically you know within within seconds it's we we live in a in a very high speed internet world it's great that we have the information we have but we don't know again what these institutions are going to do before the stock gaps that's why i don't trade into the gap itself occasionally i might or if i'm stuck in a trade or i did a trade and then i see its earnings coming up and then i'm like oh i guess i'm going to hold it but it wasn't like a pre-planned thing okay so it's 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 just something that you need to know but institutions are doing the research. They're the ones that are making the decisions. So if you learn how to read the footprints of big position players before the momentum occurs, you can take the position in the right direction and get out after the move happens for profit. But you have to understand how to trade with the side of power. And you need to know how to find it. And, and actually, again, that is what you come and learn from me. It's very important to find it because this power has the ability to pay you. So while everybody wants to make money and we talk about money all the time and I, and I, and I used to talk about it more actually, I, pro I could talk about it more than I do. The purpose is really to predict the directional bias because if you can predict directional bias, you can make money and that's it. So like if you could say this is gonna go here by tomorrow or Friday, you can take that information and you could trade on it and make money and that's it. And whether or not I can predict where somebody's going to go in five minutes or 10 minutes or three days, either way. Again, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to predict what's going to happen in a shorter period of time than a longer period of time. So we're not doing leaps. We're not doing longer term options. If you said to me, Melissa, who's going to win the election and where's the market going to be, you know, December 1st? I have no idea. You know, I'm not a psychic. So that longer term, you don't know. Okay, shorter term is easier to trade. And that is why we're doing weekly options and we're doing day trades where we're in and out in several minutes. But you've got to know how to read what institutional money looks like and it's essential to becoming successful. And again, you can win big because you're going to get the, you're going to get the momentum. You're going to get a big flow of money and it's going in a certain direction. And why do I focus on shorts? I focus on shorts because I like to do fast trades. I also focus on shorts and shorting to the downside. Again, puts are shorts, it's put is an option, but you're basically shorting it. You're betting that it's gonna drop, okay? Because a lot of day traders and a lot of retail traders don't focus on shorts, don't know how to short. They're not good at shorting, they prefer to go long. And it's always gonna be that way since the beginning of time, it's always been, and it's always gonna be that way. And again, as crazy as it sounds, the market's been bullish all year 2024. Even I am shocked how bullish the market has been this year. Okay, and I'm shocked why? I'm shocked because the data really didn't coincide with it looking back. And I'm also shocked because of the fact that they said they're gonna drop rates five times this year. And every time they said they're gonna do it, they never have. So the market has built in the entire year of 2024, so many rate cuts, all these rate cuts, and it hasn't happened. If it doesn't happen in September, or it doesn't happen in December, or if it doesn't happen in 2025, we will sell off 100%. I can guarantee you that. Because right now it's built in so much and none of it has happened. So that's why I personally am surprised how much it rallied. But the fact is I've made money shorting. All the trades we're gonna go over here that we did in the last couple of days were shorts and the market is bullish. So you don't have to be on the side of the market every day. And in fact, I think it's better not to be. Why? Because it's easier because you know what to look for. So when you're really looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of the power in a stock. You want to be on the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. And institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. And again, the market is not over the highs yet. It's waiting for Navinia. It could be waiting for a September rate cut, which we don't know. I have no idea. We'll see. But let's just go over here. I was talking about gaps. What I do, if you come and you take the class, you come to New York City, you're going to meet me, you're going to meet other traders, and you're going to learn how to figure out if Amazon is going to do what? Fall on a gap or find Amazon or BABA or BA or anything at all. So let's take a look at it. So here was Amazon. Amazon closed here at one price at four o'clock. Every day the market closes at four. Gaps down the next day at 930. Open fell. Okay, so what is this? This is a gap. It's a bearish gap, or it was a bearish gap. We did it today, over here, snug as a bug. 
Stock closed here, gap down, open, dropped. We shorted it. It was a good short, actually. So again, a gap is a difference between the close and the open. Every day the market closes at 4 and it opens at 9.30. And there it went. Boom. We did it. So that was a good little trade today. Here are some more gaps that we did. Let's go all the way back. I was talking about the sell-off. This was ooh, July. Stock closed here, gap down. Again, this is the QQQs. Again, the Qs are expensive. Yes, we day trade the market, but again, it's cheaper to do puts. This closed up here above 480, gap down here around 476-ish, and fell. This was a period here right off the highs. The last time the market made brand new all-time highs, it was early July. Again, the SPY is near the highs. The Qs are not. This was earlier today around 1 o'clock. I don't know where we closed. We probably closed green today. But again, the market fell here. It got dumped. And again, why? This reason, that reason. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. The fact is it was a gap. So I'm looking for institutional money. I'm looking for it in the gap. And then I'm trying to predict that the momentum's gonna come into the live debt. Because after after the fact is when you're gonna get paid. Again, I'm, I'm not, not predicting if is gonna, gonna gap, gap up or down and in a trade, trade ahead of time. I don't know that. I see the gap. Then I've gotta, gotta get the move on that live debt. debt. And I, I see it and figure it all out in the pre-market in the morning or at night. And then I, I take the train, okay? okay. So it's, it's a skill set that I've developed over years of just doing this one particular thing. And this is really the benefit of coming and learning from it. You're going to learn my skills. You're going to learn how to apply the skills yourself to do it. And then whether you're $500 or $1,000 or whatever your goals are, like Dan has goals. He wants to make this much money, but 30 days or 45 days. If, if you learn how to do it, you have forever to make money. Does this make sense? A lot of traders struggle because they never get the skill set. They, they jump around too much to too many different things. things. I told you that. They also get confused, don't understand things, don't have a mentor to ask questions, and they don't have the support system of the live room, which, again, I offer people to. Okay. The education is essential to understand it. You may think you want to take a trade and buy a stock or short a stock without understanding what's going on. But trust me when I say, if you understand why, this is going to drop, and I'm predicting this is going to drop. You will have a higher level of conviction, and you will risk more money, and you will be able to hold it longer, and you will be able to ban it, like take it as soon as I call it, instead of hesitating, like maybe I should take it, maybe I should. You know, you will just do it, and you will do it, and you will get in, and you will get a good price, and you won't overthink it. Because a lot of times traders, again, overthink things. Should I do it? Maybe I should do it. Should I do it? Should I and, and then they, they miss the trade, trade. then it's gone, gone. okay? Anyways, Anyways, if you're here, you're here because you don't have a strategy that allows you to make money consistently, we talked about that, but it's really the direction. It's it's finding something that's gonna work on it mostly every day. Again, some days we don't have trades, but most of the time we, we do have trades on a daily basis. And again, I'm looking for one thing, one thing. So we're gonna talk about the last week. So this is one week. I started last Monday and I put in this week, but it was a little bit over a week. So last Monday, okay, the 19th, we did HPQ. This was a day trade. We entered the stock at 3503. I called this trade live in the room. Figure out your risk. So you could have done half. So if you don't want to do 7,000 shares, you want to do half risk. I risked 3290. You could do 1,000. Okay. Anyways, we got out 3457. This was a nice trade. It was a fast trade. $3,220, here's the, here's the daily. This is a daily chart of HPQ. Stock closed here, gap down, and we shorted it. And it worked. You may say, well, how does that, look at that. It doesn't look like anything. This worked, this was a short. We had a beautiful trade in this. Despite the fact that it closed with a little doji, it was a nice sell-off on that day as a day trade. Again, this was 819. So again, that's it, you're done, boom. So you can risk, again, approximately $1,700 or whatever. You could risk one, a quarter of this. So, you know, it has to do with how much cash you have, really. Because like I said, you, you, can't, you can't risk $3,200 if you got five grand in a prop account. That would be ridiculous. That would be more than half your account. What if this trade loses? It didn't lose, but what if it would? So again, I put stops in, it's a limit order stop, but if you're following me in the room, you would have done the trade, you would have got in, got out. And again, talking about beginners, how long does it take to do it? I have a woman in the room, 
Uh, she never traded at all before. She did the class last November. She's doing well. She, she did trade on a demo for a while. For a while. She never traded all in her life. She traded on a demo for a while because she didn't know what she was doing and her husband was worried she didn't know what she was doing with real money. And, and now she does it. She is very good at listening to me. She is very good at getting out of the trade. She's very good at not going crazy. She she just follows exactly what I do. She's very, very good at it. Her name's Allison, she's in the room. So she, she's she's doing well, but because she, she's exactly listening to me. She's not like overthinking it. She's like, do, do, do. Again, just listen to what I'm saying and do it, boom. Um, we did not do options in HPQ. We did not. If I had, I don't think I would have made money in it, though, to be honest with you. I would have lost because I for sure would have shorted this. I would have bought the put, I mean, and I would have probably held it and it rallied. So I can tell you right now I didn't do a put, but if I had, I would have lost. So I didn't. I don't I don't know why I didn't. I guess I liked it as a day trade, but I wasn't in love with it. Um... I, do you have a question, Matt? I don't know what you mean. As far as where you're getting cash to trade, you you get cash wherever you get cash to trade, whatever works for you. Some people, again, are trading the retirement accounts. You have to check with the place that your retirement account is set up. You are not allowed to short in a retirement account, but you should be able to buy a put, which is a short, and then sell it. Uh, some people, so some people are, are, are trading their IRA. Some people have cash that they've saved up in savings accounts or loan the money and then they deposit the funds in an account. Um, we talked about this too, where some people are going to these prop places uh, that are funding you. They say they're funding you and they're charging a fee. I will be very wary of any place that says it's funding you and then they have these parameters and then they're charging you like a $1,000 fee or a $500 fee or a $1,500 fee for so much buying power. That may not be a real live account and very often those places have totally unrealistic parameters that you have to meet in, in, in order to achieve, achieve the payout. So if you are borrowing money from your own funds to to set up an account with cash, you know where the money's coming from. Um, as far as going to these places that are saying oh. that they're funding you and then charging you these fees, I would be very wary of that. I would not recommend that, to be honest with you. You are better off funding yourself, however you figure out how to do it. You know, that's your, that's your decision and your business, how you want to do it. Because again, then you know it's you're in control of the account. You know, you go to these places where they say it's blah, 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 pay a thousand dollars, get a five hundred thousand dollar account, you've got to make this much money, and then you get a payout. You're you have no control over anything. You open up an account with a broker, again, even a prop broker, but you're funding it yourself. You log in, you get a login, do 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 do, you see the money. It's there. Do you know what I'm saying? That's like real. That's real. You got it. And you know, you could make money. You go to a retail place, you make money today. You can withdraw it tomorrow. There's there's no limit on that. You can withdraw it tomorrow. You know what I mean? You open up a thirty thousand dollar account at a retail place, and you make five grand today. You want to take five grand out tomorrow? You can wire it out. ACH it out. No one's stopping you. You're allowed to do that. It's yours. Again, some of these other places, they have they make you meet all these requirements and and it's just I just would be very very wary of those types of things. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of things out there and you really got to do your due diligence is what I'm saying about about these types of places. Anyways, then on Tuesday we did the Boeing entry was 17640. We got out at 174.75. This was a nice move. Profit was 4,125. Again, I risked 3,500. You could have risked less. You could have risked half. You could have taken 500 shares. This is a good trade. If you risked half, you made two grand. So again, BA was here. So stock closed here, gap down, open, dropped. So I got out of this. I just want to show you. I got out of this here. I did the option the same day. Remember, we were talking about the option. Look where it went. Boo! Came all the way down and broke 170. I was out of this way before. I could have made another $4 in this. 
I could have made almost another five actually with the 2,500 shares, but I day trade fast. I'm in and out quick. Like again, I'm in a habit. I'm in a habit. I'm in a habit. I'm like a, again, the consistency, take it, book it, take it, book it, take it, book it, take it, book it, take it, book it. I'd rather hold the option. It's easier to manage in my opinion. And then I don't have to, you know, I don't have to sit and, mm. you know, when you're in a day trade, you must get out before four. If you don't get out before four, that trade's going to turn over into two to one or all cash. You know, I, I, you have to be flat in a day trade, but in an option, you know, you don't have to be leaning on your keyboard all day watching it. You can check emails, you can go to work, you can go to the store, you can come back, you can have lunch. But I really could have held this down. I don't, I don't really know why I didn't hold this down actually, but, but again, I'm in a habit of trading in the morning fast. Then we did Macy's, it was a good one. Oh shoot, I don't have the Macy's chart in here, sorry. I have the VA chart. I'll show you, I'll bring up the Macy's chart. Um, entry was 1580, 7,000 shares, risk was 3,500, got out at 1535, profit was 3150. Um, can you see my chart? Oh, could have done Macy's today. Look at the Macy's. Could You could have shorted Macy's today. Actually, look. Stock closed here, gap down. You could have shorted Macy's today. Anyways, we did it here. It was 821. Stock closed up here, 1774, gap down here, open at 1591. Again, what are we looking for? We're looking for institutional selling. It fell. This was earnings. Okay, I didn't read it or know why or this thing, that thing. It doesn't matter. Anyways, it was a nice trade. This was a good trade. We had a, almost a low of the day exit in this, and then it continued down here the next day. It didn't quite get to 15, but you could have shorted this today. This had a gap down today. It was a nice trade. It was a good trade there. Um, anyways, that was a that was a good one. Oh shoot, I didn't update any of these charts. I'm sorry. Well, I'll flip back and forth. I don't know why these are all. Bad. Um, we did the snow. One twenty two twenty was the entry. Shares was fifteen hundred. Risk was thirty four fifty. Exit was one eighteen fifty. This kept going too. I'll show you. Profit was five thousand five hundred fifty. This was snow on the twenty second. The snow, which we also did an option. I told you. And you see where I got out of it and where it went. So the low in the day for snow, it almost went to 115, 115, 40, 14. It was really good. But anyways, I got out of it all the way up here. So again, I like to trade the morning to get out quick. But the fact is, there's many, 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 many times where you can hold these. But again, I had done the option in the snow, so it wasn't like I knew if it kept going. I did, I did say I thought 115 on this. I did say that in the room. But again, you can get the move easier holding the option. But again, I got in get out quick. That kept going. Um, 122.20 times 1,500. Are, are you talking about, are you talking about buying power? We're talking about buying power. We got two questions here. Any time, when I say day trade, right, let's go back. So if you wanna take a thousand shares of snow, you would need 122,000, not dollars, but buying power of the snow mat. Do you understand that? So if you have, say, a prop account, you would need 10 to 1, you would need a 12 grand cash. If you have a retail trading account, like a Schwab or something like that, you would have needed 30 some thousand in cash to do a thousand shares, not 122,000. You're trading this on margin. Does that make sense? Let me know you understand that. And if you don't want to trade on margin and you don't want to day trade, you will do a snow option, which we did do. And you will just pay $3.50 for one contract of snow, which has nothing to do with margin. So you could have bought one or you could have bought four or you could have bought 25. You could have bought as many as you want. 
Jay, I think you should be doing options with us. I don't know when you're going to. It's two years ago I talked to you. Uh, I'm confirming my point with 25K. I don't know where I ever said anything about 25K. Christopher, go back where I was. 25,000 is the minimum required at a retail broker to open up a margin account. I don't know where you're getting anything about these, my risk with 25,000. I never said that. I never said you can trade and risk $3,500 a trade with 25 grand. I never said that. I don't know where you're getting that. Um, all of the advanced trades you have shown require equity in excess of 25,000. Yes, for the advanced trader, yes they do. I never said otherwise. So if you have 25,000 and you wanna risk $3,000 a trade, I think that's a lot. That's more than 10% of your cash. You would have to go to a prop place. They would give you 250,000 in buying power. You'd have enough buying power to do some of these positions, but I wouldn't be risking 10, more than 10% of your cash in a, in, a, in, a, in a trade anyways. So I don't know what your point is. I never said that you can take a $3,000 risk with a $25,000 cash account. I, I don't know where you got that. Um, I don't remember where we put the stop for snow. I can pull it up. David was on 822. I, uh, again, it was about $3,400 or whatever. Oh, we were in this, we were in this really fast. I remember this trade now. I really could have held this. I said 115. I said 115. I said 115. But you know what? A lot of people actually got out of this uh, before I even got out of it. <laughs> um, we had our stop up here. We had our, we had our stop up here because I was really aggressive when we got in it really quick. But I did hold it. I did hold it. Some people got out of it into this drop here. So this is this is the sell-off right in here. I held it and squeezed a little more out of it. But I mean, I, I, I could have held this way, way down. Uh, Chris is saying, my point is to get an actual percent of equity that you feel is an appropriate risk for a trade with a short gap strategy. You're talking about two different things. You're talking about, let me just go back here. You're talking about, um, you want to take a hundred grand. If you're telling me you want to take a hundred grand and see what percentage you're going to make of the hundred grand, that's different than what I'm talking about per trade risk. So I'm saying your expectation should be if you have $1,000 and you're risking $1,000 in a day trade, your expectation is that you should be able to flip that around to make close to the thousand and sometimes more. If you're doing options and you're risking $1,000 in an options trade, whatever it costs, it doesn't matter. Your expectation is you should be trying to make between 50% and 100% and again, some will go more, but that means like say $500, okay? So we're talking about two different things. I'm looking at return on investment versus risk to reward. If you wanna look at percentages, sometimes I'll take an options trade, it could be a 400% uh, winner. That doesn't mean you should throw your whole account of 100 grand to make 400,000 in a trade so it's like sometimes the percentages of your cash are completely insane, like bonkers, huge, on some of the trades that we do. That should not be your expectation on a regular day. And I don't look at my trading like that. So if you're willing to risk $100,000 to trade, you want to open up an account with that. Again, you will be deciding if you want to do day trades and options, which you could do both. And then I would risk if you're gonna if you're gonna start out with a hundred grand, you could risk I think 
1,000 to 1,500, and you could risk the same on options if you want to start out. And if you're doing well, and you can grow the account up to 110, 120, you could start risking 2,000. 2,500 you could bump it up to. I don't read anyone else's information at all. So whoever you're talking about, I don't, I don't use any of those things. If you're asking me how much percent of equity that any person can risk, it is up to you. Like I said, that's your choice. If you have a prop account, like I said earlier, I did, I did say this earlier, maybe you missed it, I would never risk more than 50% in a prop account. I would never risk 100%. And if you have more than 50 grand in an account, I personally don't think you should ever risk more than 10%. This is just my opinion. It's not a rule. It has nothing to do with my system whatsoever at all. So even if you have a million dollars, okay, it doesn't mean you should be risking $300,000 in positions. If you have a million dollars cash and you want to risk eight to 9,000 in options, which I'm doing in some trades, yeah, you could be in 10 trades at once and have 80 grand at risk. And I think that's okay if you know what you're doing. So there is no hard and fast rules if that's what you're asking me. You must make that decision. The amount of money you're risking in your trades is your decision. If you want to follow somebody else, they have some other rule or some other concept, that's up to you. I don't know who you're talking about. And I look at every trade that I do in a vacuum for my goal for the day. So again, I'm very focused on goals. So if I'm risking 3,000, I'm trying to make 3,000. I look at every day like that for my day trades anyways. And my options, I'm looking at my options on a weekly basis. Then Friday I took off. And then, I don't know why I have Boeing and everything here. Oh no, we did do Boeing on the 26th. Then on Monday the 26th, we did do Boeing. Um, which was really kind of funny because this doesn't look like much. So I could have had a better exit on this. Stock close here, gap down, we shorted it, got out. I could have had a better exit on this, but I made 11.50. And then this is a trade that I screwed up today. I did the market. I'm going to pull this up here. Bottom line is it was up in this, didn't get out, started to reverse. I put the stop at break even, it hit me out. But actually, I was up a good amount of money in the market today, and I screwed up my exit here. And I'm glad I didn't get out with a loss, but I was up good money, and I was trying to focus on too many things this morning doing options, and I missed my exit. But this was a good trade. Some people did get out. I did not. So we shorted it and got the drop. This was a nice trade. I was up in here, not quite $2, but almost into the drop. And I screwed it up. And then it started backing up. And I said, I'm going to put this top at break even. And then if it continues, it continues, I'll get out. And then it didn't. And then I got stopped at break even. So I was like, yeah, I didn't lose in it because it backed up. So we came, this was today. Market closed here, gap down, dropped. We shorted it. Then it flipped. Again, went all the way up and came all the way down and, and sold off into here. This was a very, very, very messy day in the market, actually. But I screwed up this trade. Um, what else was I going to do? Oh, the next one. Oops, Amazon. We did Amazon. Entry was 174.10. Exit was 173.25. Profit was 25.50. This was today. Let me pull that up. Uh, Matt, if you want a referral for a broker, you can email me. But you can pretty much go anywhere that you want to. If you have an account set up, you can trade anywhere. 827. So this is a good trade. So we did it. We got in, got the drop. And then this one, I, I should have got out here too. But then I put the stop and then I got hit out here. So this was a good exit though. And then I did a late trade today in this, which I'll go back and show you. Into here, into lunch. I made $2,700 later.
Again, this is a daily. So anyways, results from last Monday through today, we've had all winners. Again, the average risk is around 3,000. These are margin trades, was 22,445. So again, Dan was asking earlier, I don't know if that, if that helps you, but again, if you're brand new, you can start out slower. You can start out slower. But it's one system, you wanna focus on quality, that's how you're going to get the good results. That's how you're going to keep going. But why do I focus on shorts? Again, it is panic. It's panic, panic, panic. I'm looking for the stock to come in and sell off, and then it's going to drop. And nine times out of ten, it has a very fast move. Again, that's the whole point. I'm trying to get the fast move. So how are you going to find which ones to do? You're going to look for the gap. So again, let's just review. What is a gap? A stock gap on the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple. But I'm trying to predict where it's going to go after the gap. So again, I'm looking for power of money. I'm looking for a big move. I'm looking for a sell-off if I'm short. And again, some trades are longs, but I'd be looking for the stock to get bought then. Interestingly enough, one of the trades that we're in is an option in, that we're in right now, which is down is a call. I'm in one call right now. And the funny thing is it's down. So it's kind of funny because the one thing that I could lose in this week is a call. So, I mean, again, it's not like I never go long and we have made money going long, but it is just, it's kind of interesting how when I looked and thought of all the things to look at this week to go long, I wasn't in love with any longs. Um, bears go out the window. I never heard of that. Do I have certain scanners that you use in your system or certain websites to identify your stocks you're stocking for a trade? No, you can pay for a scanner. Um, you can find gaps literally anywhere. Years ago, I paid for a scanner and I felt like it was just a waste of money. It's not hard to find gaps. The idea is to qualify them and rate them. So you can find gaps anywhere for free anywhere you want or you can pay for a scanner but i just found that that was a waste of money for me personally but it's easy to find them it's finding the ones to qualify the ones that are gonna work because not every stock that's gapping down is going to fall not every stock that's gapping up is going to rally if it was that easy then no one would lose money just like a lot of people think gaps fill themselves that doesn't work either not every gap up sells off and not every gap down rallies so to say that gap fills work, that's not true either. So again, sometimes I'll look at something like we had looked at the market when it had that big gap down a couple weeks ago. I said, this is going to reverse. We didn't go long though, but I saw that it was going to reverse. So we didn't short the market. So again, we were talking initially about consistency, 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 consistency. You will find the gap, then you'll rate it. You're gonna rate it using a 26 point rating system. This is what you've learned in my class. If it rates 20 points or more, then you're gonna take it in the direction of the gap. Otherwise, you're not gonna do it. So every gap I do, it has to be qualified. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of a stock. Again, that's the whole point, okay? So you wanna look at something and you wanna take the rating system and that's what you're gonna follow. So when I said earlier that my results are consistent, my system is consistent because I'm using it every day. If I get a rating that's 15, 16 points, I don't do it. If I get a rating that's 20 points or more, I do it. That's the whole point of consistency. And whether you do you know, umpteen trades or not is up to you. I personally think one or two at a time is a lot to handle for a day trade. But you could do theoretically everything that rates good. If you get 10 good rated you know, shorts to do, that are day trades, you could do them all if you want. That's a lot to do at once. So I try to focus on one thing at a time. Um, Joe, that's fine that you're late. Um, I can send you the, the replay later. But anyways, getting back to what I was saying, gaps are a secret ingredient in charts that many people overlook, and yet they hold a lot of significance. Gaps make the trend, set the trend, and continue the trend in stocks in the market. They set the trend because they are definitive and demonstrative change and show a price in what is called an event. So gaps are a real show of the power of money. Gaps either continue the trend or in fact change the trend. So if you follow the gap, you'll be following the power of money. So everybody says, well, why do gaps sometimes fill themselves or go against it or do whatever? Because you have lots of participants in the market. You have so many people 
doing so many things all the time. And that's when people say, oh, it's, it's so tricky and it's rigged. No, you have days where institutional money is not gonna take a position in a stock or the market. Actually, to, to be honest with you, that's today. Today is one of those days. In fact, let's just pull it up really quick. The institutional money didn't buy the market today. It, 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 it didn't. Actually, it hasn't bought the market for the last week. If it had, we'd be over the high, or we'd be close to the high. We'd definitely be over 490. I'm just looking at the cues right now. Okay? So again, you have lots of players in the market, lots of participants in the market, okay? Lots and lots and lots. And you're trying to find and follow the institutional money. They're the ones that move stocks. Again, as a, people are negative talking about these types of things, but they actually help you make money because you're never gonna move a stock. No whole room of traders is ever gonna move a stock, even the biggest room out there. It's not possible. You know, the, you know, the, the Reddit men stocks that, that all of that notwithstanding, that was a once off, an anomaly, where some people had bought those Reddit stocks and they had moves made money, but more people lost money in those Reddit stocks by following those strangers taking those positions and made money. And people are still in positions that are down, trying to get them to turn around in some of those stocks. There was no strategy there. There's no underlying reason to do it. You know, you have to have an underlying reason to why you're doing it. And the reason I like gaps is because they happen on a regular basis almost every day. And they have big moves. And I like to short because they have the fast moves, but I'm really looking for the power of money and that the rating system tells me that. The rating system, if I get 20 points or more, tells me that. That's what you're gonna learn from me. That's how I'm, that's how I'm predicting it. How can I predict that, you know, BA is gonna drop or HPQ or whatever? Because I'm looking for institutional money. And I'm saying this is gonna drop and then we have to short it. It rated 22 points or whatever. So this is what you learn from me. It's a 26 point checklist. And that's what I follow. That's what allows me to make money. That's what helps me stay consistent. If I don't get the rating, I don't do the trade at all. If I get it, I do it. And I don't question it. I don't question it, okay? Like think about it. You're like, okay, do I wanna be with a group of retail traders or do I wanna be with the power of money? Again, if power of money wants to take the market up, to hand up over the highs and make new highs, regardless of what the Fed does. And that is what it's gonna do. And there's nothing that's gonna stop it. If the market's gonna sell off, or NVIDIA, let's say NVIDIA again, we're talking about NVIDIA. If for, for whatever reason, NVIDIA comes out and says something, or crowd on Wednesday night, that isn't what people expect, and the stocks get dumped, okay? Then it's gonna sell off, and again, these are stocks that can have monster moves, even in the gap, not just on the live day in the gap. I mean, Crowd is a stock that could have a 50 point move in a gap, could be more. Again, it could be up, it could be down. So every stock that we trade, we're not trading penny stocks, we're, tra we're not trading low float stocks, we're trading stocks that have momentum, that move, that have volume, you're gonna get filled, you're gonna get filled in and out. You know what I mean? And you think about it, you're like, okay, I wanna be with the side of, power i'm predicting the gap before the open i'm seeing the gap in the pre-market matt that's when i'm doing the rating and this is what you learn from me you're going to do the rating too or you should again in the live room i'm calling the trades but the whole point of doing the class and learning it is you're going to get up in the morning you're going to give yourself at least an hour before i open the room which is 9 a.m or an hour before the open 8 30 a.m eastern time and you're gonna go through and you're gonna make a watch list and you're gonna rate the gaps yourself. And then you sign in the room, you say, oh my God, I rated snow and snow rated good and Melissa likes snow, I know what I'm doing. And then I call the trade. You're doing it in the morning before the open. Make sense? Does everyone understand that? I'm not predicting the gap before the gap occurs. I'm seeing the gap in the pre-market. That was a good question. Any other questions? So anyways, when you're seeing where the power of money positions are getting in, it is like finding a gold mine. It literally is like finding a gold mine because they're, they're so powerful. And again, it's the momentum. And it's very easy to make money and it pays you when you get that momentum. 
again, snow is a great example because it, it, it went where I wanted. I said 115, it went there, it did the option work, the day trade worked, it worked really fast. I love when trades work fast, okay? But there's a lot of examples with that. It's, it was power money. And again, this helps you get the conviction to do it. So it's, it's just, it's so much easier to press the button and take a trade if you understand what to look for. That's what gives you conviction to do it. And ultimately you need conviction to make money. Okay, you need conviction to make money. If you don't have conviction in what you're doing, you're, you're all over the place. You're second guessing yourself, you're gonna lose. You let trades go against you too, too big and you end up losing more than you wanted to risk. You don't use, use stops, you turn on the TV, you're listening to all these people say different things. It's, it's very, very difficult right now. You could flip on and hear all kinds of things on a different channel depending what channel you're listening to. And sometimes those things can be a distraction for you. Again, you figure it out yourself. You're in your own little world. When I trained, when I'm doing it, I'm in my own world, okay? And you can work from home and you do it from home or an office or wherever you are. You close the door. You have the time to yourself. It's not that long. We don't trade in the morning. The day trades, we're done by 10 a.m., 10, 15. It doesn't take that long to do it to get in and out. Again, the room opens at nine, but we're trading right into the, into the open. The options, you take the trade, you put the trade on. If you don't want to watch it, you put a sell order at 50% or 100% as soon as you take it. If you pay $3 for something, put a sell order at six the first day. See if it hits. Come back and check it at lunch. If it hits you out, it's a limit order. It'll hit you out, okay? And you're out of it and you're up and you didn't even have to watch it if you don't want to watch it. And that's even the first day, you know. <laughs> Any other questions here? Anyways, the whole point of learning the system is to learn the how, what, and when. So it's how do you make money in the market? You have to focus on a strategy. For me, it's golden gaps. What stocks do I trade? Anything that rates 20 points or more per my 26 point rating system, which you would learn in my class. I'm always taking the gap in the direction of the gap. I'm never going against it. Never, never, never. Even when I say, well, this is gonna reverse. I'm not doing the reversal, okay? When do you trade them? Early in the morning, right out of the gate, into the open, when they set up and trigger. And again, I teach in the class six different entries and you will learn that too but I'm calling the trades live in the room, but you still have to know how to do it. You still have to know how to do it. You must have a structure in place to make money consistently. It's about the consistency and that's what many traders lack. A lot of people are asking questions today about the amount of money and how much you risk and this and that. Don't you understand if you know what to do, the amount of money you risk is irrelevant. Do you have any idea how much money, how many, how many people are trading that have no idea what to do? If you risk a dollar and you can consistently turn that dollar into 50 cents, even if that's only a 50% return, if you can consistently do that, then you'll very easily be able to turn that dollar into more, however long it takes you. And you'll feel confident you could do it. And then it, you, you just take it to a hundred or a thousand or 5,000 or 10,000, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's many people are not consistent with their trading and then they're not confident in the market or their own abilities to trade. Or like I said, they think the market's rigged, but they really aren't confident in themselves or they're not using a strategy that works. It, the amount of money is irrelevant because you put a couple zeros after it and then you really see where it's at and where you can go. And I always tell this story. I had a small account at one point I don't remember what year this was. I think it was the first year. And I didn't want to refund it. It was I was under the amount of the prop broker. Was that a prop broker? And he wanted me to send money. I said, no, I'm not. I'm not sending money. I'm sick of sending money. And I, I hadn't figured out everything out yet. And I said, just give me tomorrow. Give me tomorrow to trade. And he said, fine, you can trade tomorrow. And he, and he kept my account on. And you know, like the next day I made like, three times the amount of the account, and then I didn't have to send money. So it's like, to say percentages again, it's all relative, because if you know what you're doing, and you can hit it spot on, it's, you know that you, you know that. Like, that's why, if I have a losing week in options, I don't stress myself out. And sometimes that happens if I get the market direction wrong. I know that the next week I'll win, or the week after that I'll have a, mo a monster week. If I lose in a day trade, say I lose two days in a row in day trades, I know then 
I'm going to have a string of wins after that or a big trade after that. So when you believe in yourself and you understand what to do and you really have the high level of confidence, then you will go through the downturns and they will be a lot less and shorter and they won't affect you negatively and they won't affect your account negatively if you believe in yourself. The problem is that so many people don't believe in themselves because they really have been through the ringer with trading where the downturns have lasted far longer than any upturn for them. And that does, like I said, not only affect your trading account, but it affects your psyche. And then people start to feel like, oh my God, I need to have something that, you know, has a thousand percent win ratio or, the, or you know, this thing that... That's, while again, it's great to have big trades sometimes, that's, that's not really, really realistic. Like we were talking about, you know, people want to open up an account with $500 and make a hundred grand in a month. It's like, it's, you have to be realistic. Once you get grounded and you start to think realistically, actually a lot of the things that you wanted to achieve with trading will end up coming true and be better than you expected. But until you get two feet on the ground and learn what to do, the money should be irrelevant because you can make money if you know what to do. If you don't, you'll lose. So you got to learn what to do. Does it make sense? And I get that everyone's focused on the money. When I trade, I'm focused on the money too. But again, I'm more focused on trying to predict the direction. And so I'm more focused on that every day. Um... I don't have two basic strategies. It's the same strategy, it's a rating system. It's a different way to take the trade. You can day trade a gap or you can do an option. I like to do both, <coughs> but people have different types of accounts. So you'd have to have one account to do both or you'd have to have two accounts. It's the same strategy. It's a 26 point rating system, that's it. You learn that. And you can use it however you want. You can do a day trade, you can do an option. I think the room is beneficial for people though because in the room every day, when I'm calling the trades, I'm also talking about what I think and targets and the market and all that stuff. Even if you come to the room and you don't wanna do day trades and you just wanna do options and say I don't call an option in snow. I did, but say I call the day trade in snow and I don't call the option in snow. You're listening to me talk about the snow and you could do a snow option on your own. You know, I have some people in the room that are not day trading, that don't have margin accounts, and they are trading the options as, as I'm doing the day trade. You know, that's, that's, that's totally up to you. Because again, like I said, some people are trading their retirement account, and you can't do margin trades in your IRA. Yes, I hold options overnight. I held the snow until the second day, until Friday. I get out of snow Friday. But I could have got out of snow on Thursday. I don't hold every trade though, that's an option that, uh, every time. If I have a big move in something, then I will get out. Right now, I'm in quite a few things, to be honest with you. Um, the room is very valuable to you, mentoring is key. It really, really is. And again, I took one class when I first started back in 2008, and that person was not accessible. <laughs> I mean, that person just was not accessible. They weren't running the room every day. They paid someone else to run the room. And that person was not accessible then that ran the room to ask questions outside of the room. So again, having someone to go to to ask questions about that understands what it is the system is itself, especially me because I invented it. I created it. I, 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 I invented this whole thing. So you're asking me, I know it. Like I could do this in my sleep. <laughs> so the, the whole point is it's not like I'm paying someone that I taught the system that's running the room or teaching the classes. You're getting me. You're getting the best of me. And I think that that is why the class in New York is going to be very valuable. People are going to get to meet me. It's It makes it real. It makes it, it, you know, me real, which I am. But again, it's like a lot of people. There's so many places out there. And I know because I go to these webinars, I go to these places, I participate in these things where they have, you know, you know, 50 people talking a day. I know that some of these people are saying that they're on TV and they're not. I know that some of these people are saying that they live in New York and they don't because they have pictures of Wall Street in the back of their website and they're not in New York. So this gives you an opportunity to come and make it real for yourself and see what what it could be for you. 
And again, what that is has to do with how much time you want to invest in this to do it and the money. But there's, there's no looking back once you make up your mind that you want to do it. Because I think once the, once the bug hits you that you really want to do this and you want to be successful, I really don't think there is any looking back. You might think you want to change your mind or second guess yourself along the way or feel like you want to quit. But you keep going to webinars and you keep going to lectures and you keep trading anyways because you really want to do it. So then just throw yourself into it. Be all in into it. You know? Um, I will hold options over the weekend, yes. <laughs> That's tricky though, but I will. I mean, if I'm doubting something, I may as well hold it. What's What do I have to lose? I was in a BA option over the weekend that looks a lot better now today than it did over the weekend. I held it over the weekend. Expires Friday. I'm in the 170 BAs. I did the 175s and I got out. And I did the 170s. And then that backed up. And now now I think that I think that goes where I want it to go this week. Anyways, the I'm 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 teaching you the rating system. That's how I'm making the prediction. So the rating system measures gaps by rating them on the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Number two, a big move on the day. Number three, early confirmation of the bias in the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. And number four, precise entries with follow through on a good risk to reward target potential. So again, you are trying to find one golden nugget. If you find a few, that's fine. I really think it's easier to do one trade a day though. And then I don't keep trading all day. Like if you, if your goal is to make $3,000 and you made it in five minutes, you're done. It doesn't mean you're gonna take 10 more trades and they're all gonna win. Not even the same stock, do you follow me? <laughs> so again, it's like you're throwing, trying to hit a bullseye. If you try to throw that bullseye in 100 times in a row, you're not gonna get it 100 times in a row. If you hit the bullseye, you got it once, take your money and run to the bank. And that's, that's literally how I look at it. The odds are against you as the day goes on, uh, on to lose. The odds are you will lose as the day goes on. So you're trying to just minimize. Less trades is, is better. Less trades, less losses, more wins. Do you follow me? So that's the other reason why I don't have the trading room open all day. So you got to put a plan of action in place. You're going to trade golden gaps. You want to learn the system. Anything that rates over 20 points or more. So you have a high level of success. It's about odds. There's no 100% anything. Even though we had all winners in the last week and a half. There's no 100% system. You're trying to put the odds in your favor. I feel like the odds are in my favor if a gap rates 20 points or more. I said, well, the odds are in my favor. I'm going to do it now. Otherwise, I don't feel like the odds are in my favor. Do you follow me? If there's no 100%, I want to, this is all about trying to look at it and saying, I want high odds, okay? Like, it's not high odds that it's going to snow tomorrow in New York City. That would be very low odds, okay? It's August. It's high odds that I'm probably going to get up tomorrow, and it's probably going to be about 70, 75 degrees at 6 o'clock in the morning. That's very high odds, and probably that will be the case. So you just got to put your odds in your favor, knowing them, instead of just winging this, you know, taking trades with a hope and a wing and a prayer. You know, I was talking about those, those Reddit trades, like it's a hope and a wing and a prayer where some of those people are in trades that are down in those, some of those stocks are like GME and think they're going to go back to where they ever bought it. There's no plan of action in place for that. It's a hope and a wing and a prayer. I've never played poker in my life. I don't even know how to play poker, actually. I, I've never played cards, uh, you know, gambled, but it's funny. If I ever, I could be one of those card counter things. What's that movie? <laughs> oh, what's that movie? I can't even think of it with Kevin Spacey. Oh my God, I can't even think of it. I always thought I could, I could count cards. <laughs> you know, I could count cards and probably gamble because I'm very good with, very good with numbers and math. 24. Or is it, no, is it 21? It was 21. Yeah. The Kevin Spacey movie. Anyways, you want to get the best entry. You're looking for one to three. And then you have to have a money management, you know, plan for yourself. Again, don't risk your whole account, even if you have a small account, proper account. Be Think normal. So you want to be practical and professional and you need a supportive mentor, which is me. 
So if you decide you want to learn this, you will come to me and learn the 26 point checklist. This is everything you need to know to figure out what gap to do. And again, prefer to short. You're empowering yourself to do it while I'm calling the trades and I'm teaching you everything and giving you the support system. You still want to learn how to do it. You're risking your own money and you have to understand what's going on. So I teach my class, it's called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full course on how to strategically find, pick and place stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Class is normally online, but I'm doing a one-time only event, which is very special in New York City. Now the deadline to sign up is September 12th. It's a week ahead. You can start trading now with us if you wanna sign up. People have the class tuition for the live event in New York is September 20th, 21st and half day Sunday and it's $12,999. You are going to get with that the class in New York. You have to come to New York, you have to fly to New York, or you live in the tri-state area, you can take a train or bus. For some people it's easier. You will get the trading room free through the end of 2025, the newsletter and the market report. So you're gonna get, you know, not quite a year and a half, the rest of 2024 and all of 2025, which is a great support system. And again, some people are already signed up and they're already trading, they've already made money. So again, we've been kind of on a roll here with Dane Trades. I'm hoping that we get some more moves here with these options this week. Definitely NVIDIA is a watch included. You have to get your own hotel, hotel room if you're staying in a hotel. I'm gonna have some kind of uh, breakfast thing, but we're, we'll break for lunch. And you're on your own then for lunch and dinner. If you're interested, you will email me at melissathestockswish.com. And again, it's great to get the trades till the end of 2025 and you come to New York. Any questions? Anybody wanna go over anything? Good lecture today, lots and lots of questions. Some of you have been following me for a while and I really think you should consider seriously coming to New York and meeting me and doing the class. Um, but really, considering the fact that the next class isn't until the end of October, the online, the next online one, you want to start trading. This is the class to do. Um, the class tuition is $12,999 for the live class in New York City. If you have questions, you will email me here. No, no computer, no nothing. You just come and you're gonna get everything you need. Old fashioned learning with charts and pen and paper. No computer. Um, no, I, I, the class is not in lower Manhattan. I just showed a picture of the Brooklyn Bridge, but the class is um, not in lower Manhattan. God, I can't even tell you the last time I was all the way downtown. A couple weeks ago, I had to go down to, I was on 15th Street. Uh, just, or so, this area where the class is, is, apps, is the best area in New York. So, I mean, downtown would be a disaster. I wouldn't be doing it downtown ever. But again, you know, some people have the Marriott points or America Express has different travel points for travel. It's less than a month from the date of the start date and less than three weeks to the live class. So if you wanna sign up or if you have questions, call me. You can call me and you can email me and ask me questions. But I wouldn't wait too much longer to join. But the deadline is the week before. It's Thursday the 12th. Any other questions? I think it's gonna be great. It's a very, very special place. Um, and again, it's really one of the nicest places in New York. And uh, I think it's gonna be a great experience for people to meet me and also to learn live. You know, sometimes I, I've been doing these online classes for since I started the business and people really don't know what they don't understand sometimes. And, you know, when you're sitting face to face or looking at someone in the eyes or, you know, it's just, I think, the more interaction, I think things become clearer for people. So I have some people that are coming 
that actually did the online class in the past, they're already students and they're coming to New York and they've been clients and they want to do the class again and they want the live experience and they want to meet me. So that's going to be interesting too because I've talked to these people online for a number of years and now they're going to get to meet me and it's good to do a refresher, but it's, I think it's really going to be great for people that are brand new because they, they don't know anything. In person is much better. You've done trading classes in person. It was great. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. I never did a live class before. I, you know, I, 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 I'm in such a fabulous place. I said, I got to do a live class here. But again, there's a lot of work and prep and planning and staff and just so many things to a live event that I didn't really consider before I decided to do it. So I'm glad I'm doing it, but this is like a one-time event. So definitely take advantage of it if you think you want to do it. This isn't something you're going to be doing every month or every year. You know, it's like this is a one-time event thing, which is the other reason why I think it's really special. And in New York City in September, is going to be absolutely beautiful. You know? I, every person that decides to come will be very happy that they came. That much I can say. <laughs> you know, the location, the what you're going to learn, what you're going to get out of it, everybody's going to be very happy that comes. I know there's people who are thinking about it. They just have, you know, like two weeks left to decide. But, you know, if you're booking travel, you really should decide, like... <laughs> probably by September 1 because you got to make plans especially if you're getting a hotel you know great lecture thank you for coming do good this week people if you're trading be careful be careful and if you're interested in the class it'd be great to meet some of you especially some of you I, I recognize um, email me here and again this is my phone number if you want to call. Wonderful. You're welcome.